Guitar and Excel, spreadsheet creation, mapping the path to fretboard enlightenment, part number one. Get ready, because it's time for our guitar skills to Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay, because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's two tabs down below, example and blank. Example being the finished product, the completed work, the answer key, if you will. The blank tab having a blank worksheet where we will construct our project from scratch from the blank worksheet. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be constructing as well as why we might want to construct it. There's two main objectives that we have here. If either of these objectives are met, this may be a really good project for you. One objective is just to hone down our Excel skills. So we're gonna be using a lot of tools within Excel as we construct this worksheet and it's a great project just for that. The other is that we wanna construct a useful worksheet which can help us out with basically our music theory as we play mainly the guitar, but you can also apply it to other uh, areas as well. So let's take a look at those two objectives. So the first one, the formulas that we'll be using and the formatting that we will be putting together in Excel. Note that we of course are gonna be using some uh, formatting in terms of what the cells are gonna look like. We're gonna be numbering the cells here. We'll use some series in order to number the cells. We'll use some table formatting tools that are quite common. And uh, then we'll format the headers and so on in the cells. We'll have some more complex formatting and formulas uh, such as text type formulas, which will help us to create a text type formula as we do this. We'll have a lot of logic formulas here as well. You can see this looks like a pretty intimidating looking formula, which has an if type of logic progression. And so we'll have formulas like that that will come up fairly uh, uh, often. We've, we, this is a Roman numeral formula that we have here. This is a, a V lookup, although we're gonna be using the X lookup most of the time uh, in our project, we probably won't use the V lookup because it's kind of outdated for what we're using it for. The X lookup is the, is the better tool typically. We will use, again, another kind of logic formula that looks quite intimidating, but is, is not too bad once you wrap your mind around it. We will also see how we can tie the worksheet together, be able to copy and paste uh, the worksheet so that we can kind of have similar formatting but have a different process that we're going to be using. You can see we have more kind of somewhat complex formulas here, fairly complex formula here to get our to get our Roman numerals. So there's a there's quite a bit actually of of just Excel tools that we're going to be putting together. And even if you're not all that interested in music theory or the guitar in particular, it might be useful to do that. And the fact that it has some music theory related to it might make it a little bit more interesting as well. The second objective on the music theory type of front, we're gonna actually create basically a fretboard here. So here's the fretboard and I've got the, the, uh, the, the numbers or letters of each note on the fretboard. So we'll construct an actual fretboard here. You'll notice that I have a number and a letter when I construct the fretboard. I'm doing that intentionally because I, I feel like if we add a number in there, I'll try to convince everyone of this, uh, but you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. But I feel like if we number the notes, there's benefit to that. So that's one of the arguments that I'm gonna be making as I, as I go through this. I'll get into that in more detail shortly, but the general idea is the, if we visualized the guitar, this high would represent the string at the top, the E string, and this would be the heavy or low E string, the one closest to the ceiling. And then we've got our notes E, A, D, G, B, E. This is the high pitch E string, the string closest to the floor. Now note, this is the first thing that I think is really useful, especially to beginning guitar players that haven't had a lot of time looking at tablature or, or music, uh, formal music, because uh, a lot of times they actually write the fretboard with the high note on top. So, and I think the reason they do that is because if you were looking at a guitar and you were looking at the fretboard like this, 
you'd have to rotate the guitar around and you would be looking at it this way. And if you look at it that way, the high string is on top, which makes sense. But that's not how most people visualize it, I don't think. I'm a little dyslexic, so maybe, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong here, but I mean, I think most people are looking over the top of the guitar. So they're actually kind of, it's easier for most people to visualize the low or heavy string on top when they're trying to map out where their fingers will go. So I'm gonna construct it like this so that you're, you can kind of imagine the fretboard is being pressed on top of the, on top here so that we have the low string on top and we're kind of looking over the top of the guitar. It's kind of like you're looking through the back of the guitar because that's where your perspective is generally when you're playing the guitar. That's the, that's the idea. If you wanna construct it with the high string on top, you can. You could just flip it all around if I'm just a dyslexic weirdo and you know it's quite possible uh, I, I've got some kind of, but you could flip it and put the high string on top and that's kind of what most tablature looks like but I think again I think intuitively a lot of people kind of do it this way so we'll map out uh, the fretboard so now you have a fretboard that is mapped out and then notice it's going up to 12 frets this is where it repeats again that's why these are in black so here's the 12th fret that will repeat again. You might not need all of this stuff up top. You might hide some of the cells, but sometimes it's useful just conceptually to have it run two times over. So you have it starting over at 12, starting over at 24. Sometimes conceptually that is useful. If you want to hide some of it, however, I could put my cursor from column M to column Y, and we'll talk about how to do this more later. I'll just do it quickly now to show you what I'm talking about. We can hide this, and now you've got just from one to 11, right? Before it nothing doesn't start over. So if you wanna just, if you just wanna work on what you're looking at, you can hide the fretboard, and then I use this little tool to see where my finger position is on the fretboard. So if I'm working on, you know, fret five to, to eight, then I might uh, put, a, put this around there. Then we'll actually construct our, our, our major and minor scales over here. And the way we'll do that is you just list out, we'll just list out the, the notes from one, from A to uh, G sharp. And this is where I'm gonna start to talk about the numbers here, because notice in, in Western music, we obviously talk about the actual notes with letters and there's some benefits to that and there's some cons or some pros and cons to that. The ben one of the benefits are that you have something different than numbers that we're gonna use for so many other things, right? We're using numbers to talk about like the relative positions in a scale and the chords in the scale. And so, you know, the, so there's a lot of things we knew, use numbers for already. So it's nice to be able to use letters for something so that we don't have to say, which number are you talking about? Are you talking about the actual number of the note or the number of the scale or the number of, of the interval or, you know, or what, what are you talking about? So, so that's nice. And it's kind of nice that we can build actual uh, whole, w w w whole scales with every note in the alphabet. So the major and minor scale will have every note in the alphabet, although it might have sharps and flats in it, which kind of messes up that whole concept. So, so you got every note, but then there's sharps and flats in it. So you've got this kind of interesting, interesting spelling of notes because of that, uh, which again has pros and cons related to it. Uh, some of the cons with that system, however, is if I if I count if I just count from A and I don't even worry about the sharps and flats if I go A B C D E F G up to G I can do that but trying to count that backwards is a little difficult and oftentimes you have to do that in music so if I'm trying to count G uh, F E D C B A you can memorize that you might say that's not too bad but it's still a lot harder than going one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, right? And then if you add the flats in there, it gets even worse because now the alpha, you can't even say the alphabet. You got to go A, A sharp or B flat. And then it's a sharp or a flat. But when you're going up, it's usually a sharp. So A, A sharp, B, C. And then there's no sharp between B and C. But then there is a sharp, C sharp to D and then D sharp to E. And then there is no, sh there's no sharp between, there's no between E and F. And then, you know, right. And if you try to go backwards that way, 
then you got to remember that they're flats and not sharps possibly if you want to say it correctly and you have to memorize it backwards that's quite difficult for most people that takes a, you know it's worth doing but it takes a lot of memorization whereas again if you just memorize the notes like if you just name note a1 a sharp 2 b3 c4 c sharp 5 d6 d sharp 7 e8 then you would have to memorize the association of the number and the note but once you do that it's so much easier to then count backwards right and the sharps and flats don't have two names so you want to so you kind of want to know both methods because there's pros and cons to both of them but i highly think it's useful uh to learn that th to actually number the notes it's also helpful for our excel worksheet but i think just in practice that's why so that's why I'm going to then have the letters, the numbers, and then I'm going to add them together. And so we have both of those. And then I'm going to map it out over here using, using uh, our, our whole, whole half kind of progression scale. Uh, and that's our, going to be our major, our major scale, uh, what defines a major scale. And we'll start with a C sharp. Well, I mean, sorry, with just a C. And we'll map this out. And then we'll create our little worksheet over here, which will say this is in the major or Ionian major scale for C sharp, and you'll have all this information re related to that scale. So we've got then uh, the notes. Now these notes are numbered without the letters. So I'm gonna construct this for two reasons. One, it's actually a little bit easier to look at. Notice, like if I look at this and I know those numbers and I know them as notes, it's actually a lot less convoluted than looking at this, which is quite messy. So, so that would take some memorization to do that, but, but it, all, it also helps me from an Excel worksheet to then create this one, which has both the number and the note. You don't need the number if you don't want the number. If, that, if you really don't want to do that, that's fine. But I highly recommend learning the number personally. So now you've got uh, the C, the, 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 the scale here, and then and then you've got each of the the chords in the scale and then the roman numerals will give us uh whether or not if you're playing in the scale of c major you should be playing each of the notes in the scale are going to correspond then to a chord and all you have to know is well is it a, a major chord or a minor chord that i'm pay, playing in the scale and these Roman numerals, if it's if it's uh, a capital or uppercase, <laughs> then it's going to be a major scale. That's the convention that's usually used. If it's lowercase, then it's minor. So if you're playing a C in the C major scale, you can play the chord of a C major. Then you move to the two note in the C major scale, which is a D, and you would be playing a minor. Then you'd play the E, and it would be a minor. The F goes back to major and then the G goes to major, and then back to minor for A, and then the diminished, which we'll talk more about later, which a lot of people kind of just drop off when they're first learning it, which might be good just when you're first learning it. So you can say, when you're playing a scale, it's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Okay, so then, and then we'll also have the intervals in here. And this is where, again, the numbers are so useful because if I say the third note in a C, then it's, it's kind of like we think about that as a, as, a, as a major third. And that's basically, you know, two whole steps is how we think of it. And then you got to know what a whole step is and whatnot. But if you, if you just say, well, how many notes away is it? It's four notes away, right? And if you number it, then it's eight minus four, right? If I'm on if I'm on a C, what's the third of C? Well, if I see the C as a four, then four notes away is four plus four or eight. And the eight, if I number my notes, is an E, right? And the fifth is always seven notes away. It's a seven note away fifth. It's a fifth note in the scale, right? One, two, three, four, five. There it is right there. But it's seven notes away when I look at all the notes and I'm not looking at relative position. So it's always seven notes away. So four plus seven, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, is that right? And so it's so much more difficult to know those intervals if you don't use the numbers 
because then you're going to have to count on your fingers and deal with the 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 the, the um, sharps and flats to try to say okay C D and wait no it's C C sharp D and then D sharp and then E but then there's no sharp and then F and then G, you see and then G right you'd have to count that on your fingers whereas if you knew the number C is four and then I'm just going to go up seven seven plus four is eleven and if you know that eleven is a G those intervals are so so much clearer it's ridiculous now then and then you and then we could also work on the sevens the 9 the 11 and the 13 and look at those intervals as well but the three these are the main three then we can also see this in terms of a of a uh, circular uh progression here it's useful to do that because when we build scales we usually pick up every other note so this will help us to kind of visualize if we're trying to build our build what chords we're looking at and then it's useful for us to do this to, to, to then say what the next thing is. So first, before I get to there, notice if you're over on this side and you're working on something in here, then I can have these two things side by side. I can hide, for example, column Z to, to let's say AJ, hide those. And now I've got this these two things side by side here. And I can make this as large as I can make it. And then I might want to highlight something in here. Maybe I want to put the scale in place. So I might then, usually what I would do is I'd say, let's go ahead and format this. I'm going to go into the Home tab, Format Painter. This is a little tedious, but it's really useful. I can say, I want to make everything in here in conformity with the scale. So I'm going to say, if it equals a C sharp, then I want you to make it, I'm going to say more colors. I want you to make it fill blue and then if it's and then i'm going to say format if it's equal to this one i'm going to say i want that one to be blue as well let's go format blue boom and then if it and then i'll say okay and then if it's equal to i'll say this one then i want you to format it blue as well and there's the e and then i'm going to say if it equals this one i want you to format it as blue as well and then there's the f and then we want the g so i'm going to say equals this one format it as blue and then a equals format this one as custom blue boom one more round equals this one format it custom blue and that gives you your fingering position so if you so so now you can here's your classic fingering position the pentatonic scale is in here as well as the major the major chord so then i can say well if i'm looking at this position that i can start to memorize i would call this position one which we'll talk about later but it's you can call it the major scale the pentatonic scale is inside of it and so is the chord so i can i can then start to say well where's these three notes once i have this scale mapped out these are all the notes in our scale i'm going to do another conditional formatting i'm going to say this is equal to this one the c oh hold on a second cancel that let me highlight this first i'm going to say conditional formatting equal to this one and I want to make it green so I'm going to make that green and then I'm going to say conditional formatting then this one I want to make it uh, red and then conditional formatting this one and I want to make it yellow right and so now now I've got all the chords in the scale and I can look for the the ones i've got all the notes in the scale i can look at a particular position where my fingers are at and try to see if i pick up each of these colors i'm picking up a c major right and i could i can i can uh pick around meaning i can just pick and play different things that are in the scale and that should sound good and then land on the c major which would be holding one of you know each of these colors right and then if i wanted to switch to the next note then i can switch these colors 
to here, right? And that's a little bit easier to do. I can say, okay, what if I, what if I go to my rules and I say, now I'm moving down to this one. So I want to make the highlight. I don't change, I don't need to change the blue ones. I just need to change the, the colored ones of, of red, green, and yellow. So I could say, okay, let's manage the rules. So now I just manage the rules once I've got them in place and the ones on top, I just need to change these three. So now I can change the new yellow one needs to be A. So I'm gonna change this one and I'm gonna move it from here. Now it's gonna equal, uh, not this one, this one. So now we've got A for that one. And then this one, I'm gonna say this is equal to uh, this one now. And then I'm gonna say, okay. And then the green is gonna be equal to this one now. I'm gonna say, okay and then okay and now you've got the the shift of the position and you're still in all all the notes are the same but now we're hovering over the ones that are highlighting these three and you can see how that can be really useful when you're trying to play this figure it out on the guitar and if you have the numbers in here again you can kind of count the intervals as your finger in this which we'll hopefully do in future presentations all right next thing i'm going to unhide these cells i'm going to right click and unhide now, if you're switching positions, then I can just change this one note. So right now I'm on a four, which is a C. If I want to go to an A, I can just put like a one and that'll switch everything around. So now I have an A. So now the A, this is A major instead of C major, and I can rotate to whatever I want. If I want a G, G is 11. And then I can say, boom, now I'm doing everything in the key of G and everything uh, changes automatically which is great. And now the other thing that is nice is that if I'm in the key of A, uh, uh, let's say C major, then I might want to try to say, well, what can I borrow from other keys to play in C major? Or can I switch from, from playing in one key to another key, which is a common thing to do, right? I'm playing all these notes in this key and all these chords. I have all these opportunities, but what if I want to like shift to a whole nother, a whole nother scale. How, how could I do that? Well, there's two major kind of ways you would think. One would be, well, I could go to another scale that has all the same notes in it, but now I'm not, but now I'm not kind of hovering around the C as my central point, but rather something else. And the other way you might do it is to say, I'm gonna use the C here as my pivot point is what I would think of it. And then and then use and then go to different scales, but still hover around this as my central point. Now, from a theory's perspective, I think the first method is easier. So, if this is a C major, then the the most common thing to play with is going then to a the related minor. The related minor is an A. So then, if you have the A next to it, now we can switch to the A. And and obviously, we can put these side by side. I can hide all these cells and say right click and hide and and now i can look at the a minor next to next to what i'm doing over here right i can put my a minor uh next to my worksheet and uh actually i want to make it over here i want to make it all the way to to here next to my fretboard so i can right click and hide and so there we have it so now i've got so now i've got my a minor next to my fretboard that I can work with that way. And so that would be quite, that could be quite useful because then I don't have to, I don't have to then go up top and switch this to an A minor up top. Uh, and, you know, I don't have to switch anything up here. I'm just gonna say, I can just look at the relative minor so I can think of myself in the key of C, but then just looking at the relative minor, which means I'm really kind of focusing in around the A minor. Now the other modes are basically the same thing. I can then say the other modes, Dorian, I can do the Dorian mode, which is the same, uh, the same scale, but now I'm focused around a D and then I can go into the uh, Phrygian, but now I'm focused around the E, same notes in the scale. And then we can go to the Lydian and the Mixolydian and the Locrian, right? So we could, so we have all those kind of mapped out. But another way that, so that's theoretically the first way I, I think most people kind of intuitively understand the modes and how they fit together. And we'll talk about that when we create the sheet. But 
I think what help, what's also quite useful when you're playing is to say, I would like to use, I don't want to switch from A as my central note. I want to use it as the pivot point and then find the relative, the relative notes around it. Let me go, let me go to the major. Let's go to C. Let's do this with C. So I, now I want to use C as my pivot point. And I just, I want to, I want to find other scales with C as my pivot point. So that the notes aren't not going to be all the same in the scale, but C is going to be my root or tonic. So if I go down, then now I'm in the minor. So now this is a C minor. Uh, so it doesn't have all the same notes, but now we have the same pivot point of C now that we're paying. So now we're switching from a C major to a C minor instead of going from a C, uh, a C to the relative minor, which is A minor. And then again, and now I've repeated my worksheet down here so we can have the fretboard right next to it. So I can move from this fretboard to this fretboard and I can put that right next to the, the minor scale so I can now map that out. And then after that, we've got the Dorian, we've got, uh, well, these are the two Dorian, the Phrygian, and then the Lydian and so on, all with the same C as the root note now. So then, so then that's kind of nice because again, you don't have to switch everything up top in here when you're switching from one scale to the other, because uh, you'll be able to at least map it around. So you can imagine, for example, saying, all right, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to start in the key of C and then I'm going to try to pivot from the key of C to the key of A. And I can just scroll over here and see uh, the key of A and the relationships if I'm thinking about A as the root. And then I'm going to try to move from A as my pivot point down to an A minor, uh, uh, an A major. So now I'm moving to an A major instead of back to the relative major of a C major, right? And you can start to kind of maneuver around where you're, wherever you want to go into different scales that way you can use those two methods to kind of move in and out of scales you can say i can either i can either move to to a scale with all the same notes in it or i can try to use the root note as the pivot point all right so i think those are the main some of the main benefits of of the worksheet so now next time we'll start making it